Hello everyone. Welcome to the 12th webinar in 12D's Industry Solutions webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator here at 12D Solutions. While we wait for everyone to finish joining and get comfortable, I'll launch a polling question. You'll have about 30 seconds to answer about your 12D conference attendances and then I'll show the results. Okay, it looks like we've got quite an even mix of people who attended this time, people who've been to previous conferences and people who've never been along. Welcome everyone. Our industry solutions webinars are designed to provide insights into overcoming challenges in an evolving industry in more effective and efficient ways. We'll continue to run these webinars regularly and record them for posting on our YouTube channel and website. Our first 11 webinars from this Industry Solutions series, as well as six webinars from our training series, are available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll put that up on the screen for instructions. And at the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter if there's time. Today's webinar, a review of the 12D International Conference 2016, will be presented by Dr. Lee Gregory, the Managing Director and Co-Founder of 12D Solutions. In this webinar, Lee will give a brief summary of some of the topics that were covered at the conference, as well as some information about the outcome of the 2016 Innovation Awards. Over to you, Lee. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, it's great to have you to talk to you about the conference. It was a fantastic conference, so uh, those who weren't there, some of you were, hope you saw yourselves in the uh, photo we showed. I uh, hope you'll be able to give you some idea of what it was like and just how fantastic it was so that you'll come along to the uh, next conference. So this was our conference this year. It was in Brisbane, 24th of July, which just happened to be my birthday, so it was a good start. And there was one change though. Instead of $15,000 prizes for the Innovation Awards, we actually awarded 25000 So that was an extra bonus for our 25 years uh, conference at Silver Jubilee, the $25,000 worth of prizes. This time, the mining your data with 12D was what the conference was all about. And we'll see some of the talks we had, and I'll go through a bit later, just how they fitted in with that and what we meant by mining your data with 12D. And some of the conference highlights, there were over 400 attendees, so we had a fantastic turn up of people. There was 24 talks by industry. We actually had 90 talks in our 20 birds of a feather sessions. They actually were in them where we split out into four different rooms. So we had things on design, another ones on our survey, three waters, drainage, and the 12D synergy. So we had plenty of things for people to go to there. And we had an exhibition area. We had a lot of people there, AECOM, BricsCAD, CI Kennedy, Matt Monk had a stand. Position Magazine, Position Partners, Transoft, UPG, SciTech, and then we had our own ones for people to talk about for design, Three Waters, Survey, and on Synergy. We also went through what was coming in 12D Model 12, and I'll go through some of those things, and 12D Synergy 3. And a guest speaker, Dr. Alan Duffy, which I'll mention him a bit further on. He gave a fantastic talk for a couple of hours, which everyone really enjoyed. We have a welcome event, and the dinner with an entertainer, and our Innovation Awards. So I'll cover a lot of these things just so you have a good sense of how it went at the conference. Our opening talk, we always try one that will appeal to everybody in the uh, industry. And our opening talk this time was by uh, North Connects. And they were talking about the tunnel that they're working on, which actually the two presenters were David Mayers from uh, Boyer and Matthew Monk. Now, what was Earth Connects? It's actually a motorway tunnel, but in uh, Sydney, it's from joining the M2 motorway with the Pacific motorway. And it's got tunnels and the M2 integration. So it's the longest and deepest road tunnel ever built in Australia. So it's longer than Eastern Distributed, the M5 East, and Cross City tunnels all combined. And in this case, it's actually a whole kilometre of people, so let's put them up there, who have actually involved in the tunnel and uh, it was the gentleman for Boyers who actually gave the talk. So basically, it's joining the section of uh, Ring Road to the North Roads out of Sydney, the missing link for that uh, going through, so you can get down to Melbourne with, from Brisbane without going through Sydney at all. You just totally bypass it. <clears throat> so there's 12 tunnels, 16.3 kilometres, ramps, 4.1 kilometres on there, so a lot of cross packages, shafts, and there's 19 road headers on the project, which is, I think, a the largest number ever in Australia. 
So basically they've got three areas they're actually going down to drill out from and so the headers will be all in there going out to doing the job. So it's a fantastic uh, opening talk to have. So these are the uh, headers, they just grind the rock out, so they're massive things because there's a quite a big tunnel because it's three lanes each way. We're using uh, Leica equipment there, so a couple of different types of Leica with the uh, point cloud gathering, but then you're using that with 12D model, with 12D field using the tough pad and 12D CNG as well to bring all the data together and to upload the survey data as well so, and bring it back in. So CNG was a critical part of their process. So this is actually the design they put together in 12D that they then could construct from. So they built the whole tunnel inside 12D model using our tri-meshes and things, so they had some fantastic fantastic uh, building of the tunnel, so it was fully accurate, so then they could actually construct from it and compare to see how far they were off with the design. So there's some images from them, from their actual talk. And here's actually the machines in action, where they, they are actually uh, digging down there at the moment, so there's some actual on-site showing just the sort of size of it. And there'll be two passes of the tunnel, they're going through now digging through once, but then they'll come back and then drill down, for, dig down further again. So it's quite a massive tunnel. So yes, so that was our first talk, it was a fantastic one to have and they will be using 12D Synergy, not only just 12D model and 12D field, then 12D Synergy uh, to push out data, they are using new models, modules in version uh, 3 that are coming with 12D Synergy 3, so it was a very important part of their whole process. So they were basically tracking data, so they had every single point in their data management system of 12D data or full audit trails, they wanted a full everything there which they were able to do and they were doing live as-built models as they went along, so this data was being communicated, so they were seeing exactly what they are doing live in the project. So you can see there's tremendous data there, it's all, all in 3D, and then they will be able to compare that with, with their design data and see uh, was it accurately being constructed, you've got tunnel conformance plots they are able to produce along the way, and just like uh, rock bolt conformance, and there was a huge number, 300,000 I think they said rock bolts to be done, which all have to be mapped and placed, so it is a massive job. And another area they did was heat maps, heat maps, it doesn't actually for heat, it's for giving uh, data and showing data, in this case they were taking the data and then putting into a 3D uh, map, which I'll just show you one of them, so you can look at things and analyse, so it, it's a very good way of looking at data, and so they're also doing all those sorts of things with 12D model. So the, the talk also talked about all the successes they had, which basically the automatic data submission of an online collection of data, because although it was underground, they couldn't always be online, but they were bringing them together quite well, and they had it was all structured and usable data, and all the survey staff were able to use the same base data, and the data was current, live, and totally controlled. So all the sorts of things you'd like on a project. And they had automatic output to others, they eliminated double handling of data, more decisions could be made in the field, and less time in the office. And of course, they need to get that information when the road headers have to stop so they can go in and collect it, so the quicker you can get the turnaround, the quicker they can get in and uh, start digging again. So, so this is just a summary of their whole type, uh, talk, but basically they developed industry leading systems, there was nothing else in the world they've done, it was a totally integrated solution, it was flexible and customizable, and it was an easy way of analysing such rich data, because they were doing uh, scans of it all the time, so it was a huge, huge amount of data, so the heat maps and things made you actually be able to use it, and more work could be done at the work phase. So they're trying to find then clashes and problems before they have to pull out, so they could do it right there at the work phase. So they actually then were totally trying to reduce dependence on manual processes, so they're mining information from all their data, so they didn't actually do manually. And the future, basically they're looking to expand uh, more further automation, real-time reporting from the field, improved management data, and to provide data-driven solutions. And there's numerous tunnel projects in Australia coming up on the horizon, which this will be a fantastic model for. But we had a lot of other industry talks, as I say there were about 24 of them out there. So we had people like AECOM, Arabs, Oricon, Barwon Water, lovely talk on GIS and 12D field and putting data into the GIS system and using from the surveyors, Brisbane City Council, we're doing photographs and about their systems they're using for 12D pickup. Bundaberg Regional Council spoke about how ADAC is now being used in that area and they just are now taking ADAC XML data and no longer requiring plots. So it really cuts down on all that uh, tedious drafting work. 
Christchurch City Council. The talk there followed up on SKIRT and the number of talks we've had at previous conferences about the earthquakes and how they're going. And it's great to see how far they've got and how well it's all going. Uh, Cook Costello is another interesting talk we had, one by Daltons from down south, Engineering Solutions Queensland, GH&D, Gold Coast City Council, uh, Transport Main Roads in Queensland, had a number of talks, uh, SMEC, Subterra and on picking up uh, underground services and things, and WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff. So there's a wide variety of talks that we actually had and companies talking about what they're doing. It was great to see them all sharing. Because in that case, often you think companies just won't talk to other people, but they're willing to share and go through everything with everybody. We have the welcome event that was sponsored by CA Kennedy. That was on our Sunday night, so we even got together and a bit of uh, finger food, good solid food, and one or two drinks. On Monday afternoon, another part we had was a special guest speaker, and this time it was Dr. Alan Duffy, who's a research fellow at Swinburne Uni from Victoria. And he wanted all he wanted to know about recent scientific events, and we went through gravity waves, creating universes on supercomputers, and life on Mars. So it was uh, excellent talks we had with uh, Alan. Uh, a lot of you may have heard him on the ABC and other places, and uh, he actually went was right great for the mood and he actually went for over two hours and answered questions from the audience, a huge number of questions from the audience. And so finally he had to go because he had to catch a plane back to uh, Melbourne and luckily he, he just made it in time. But he enjoyed it so much that uh, he, he would like to stay for longer. Now throughout the conference, we uh, went through what's coming in 12D Synergy 3 and also what's coming in 12D Model 12. So that was a feature of a lot of the talks. So some of the things with uh, 12 d CNG3, there's this new file replication server. So this allows you to have data locally, which also talks back to the head data set. And that's going to be very interesting when you've got bad connections between various offices. So you can do a lot, have a lot of things locally and overnight, and that they may talk to the main server back at the other office. So really cut down a lot of uh, network traffic, allow you to work very, very quickly. The data sync was what they were using on the uh, tunnel, where they're taking their data the surveyors will have the data and syncing it back up to the main uh, main server, uh, the 12D Synergy server. And connections, which allow us to talk to a lot of other different packages with uh, 12D uh, Synergy. So they all went through and very uh, at the conference. With what's coming in 12D Model 12, I'm going to very quickly flash through a lot of things we went through, because 12D Model 12 is now being uh, in the final beta now, and so a lot of people you'll be able to start using. So there's over three, we saw over 300 new features in 12D Model 12, and some of them you may appreciate very quickly, and I'll just say I'll flip through them very, very quickly, but things like uh, we'll now be able to use a PDF as our online help for both F1 keys and for the uh, help button. So that should work on most people's systems, much better for writing out data. There's auto save. You can pick in OpenGL perspective views. You can pick in plan OpenGL views. You can always pick in perspective views, but not the OpenGL ones. It now highlights. You can have exaggeration in OpenGL perspective views, which again, was only for perspective views before. Uh, you can get your boundary polygon of data. With icons, we're finding out if you've got higher resolution screens or on tablets, you often then need bigger icons. You're allowed to set them separately for your toolbars or on views, because sometimes you don't need them all to be bigger. So that's now available. In dimensions, we've got style overrides, menus. With The one thing with our dimensions and leaders before is that you had to change your style if you say you just wanted to change the colour. Now you can have one style set up and then have overrides, say I want this to be a certain colour and things like that. So you can really cut down on what's, what you need for styles, for dimensions and leaders. And you can also put those things on toolbars, so you can set them all up exactly as you want them. One thing everyone was excited about is what's called view favourites. What this is, is you actually can go and for your view, you can actually pop up and it'll show you everything that's actually available on the view and you can set them to whatever you like and write it away. And you can come back later and use that to uh, set that information. And you can also use it with macro languages in chains. So it does allow you to actually set up the views exactly as you want them when you create them. And when you create a new view, you can also use them. So there's ones for plans, perspective, and perspective views. So very exciting there for people. And there's a similar thing, which is a subset of it called view positions. So in this case, it might be a perspective view where you know your eye and target, and so you can save that away, and then you just have to walk right on positions and, and pick that named uh, position. So it really makes it easy when you've got data and you want to be able to come back to it in the future. The attribute manipulate, it was actually 
released a bit of it with version 11, and it just uses string, vertex, segment attributes and properties, model and project attributes, so you can map them around, map to one to the other, which you often have to do when you've got attributes, you've got to get them in the format to go out to other products and things. And it's really helped people get stuck into attributes. And we've also got one that actually labels string attributes and properties, so it's a bit like the label mapping file, except it goes a bit further, where you can say whether you want leaders, or uh, dimensions and set them up that way. We try meshes. Try meshes now a fundamental part. They only came in version 11, but they're being used everywhere. We've had extra things like intersection lines of a tri mesh of tint, intersection lines of a tri mesh with a tri mesh, uh, contouring of tri meshes, and you can actually produce tri meshes from planar polygons. So in this case. You've got your faces of the polygon, of the uh, pyramid, and just put them in, and if they all join up properly, bang, you can make a tri-mesh. Very easy then to construct any sort of tri-mesh. A lot of people have done tri-meshes, say, for a whole road. You're able to now split it, so then you can break it up. In this case, the customer wanted uh, into five meter intervals, and it can just split your tri-meshes up. The other big thing is uh, BIM. Everybody's start, slightly trying to figure out what BIM is. We had a lot of examples of BIM and being able to bring data from other systems into 12D, so you could use all the power of 12D with your BIM data and creating BIM data within 12D. So we get a lot of fantastic examples, and a lot of the talks are covered BIM type things. And once it's there inside 12D model, then you can do profiling, options, all those sorts of things you're normally used to, and write it out to other systems. And as we realise, the 12D model is a civil BIM system. 12D puts the word civil into BIM. In lots of it is missing, and our 12D XML or 12D is actually an open exchange format, and for people can use that for civil data until the civil IFCs become available. Because I'm on various committees for those civil IFCs, international committees, and they're still a little way off. So in the meantime, 12D XML has everything you need for your BIM data. We also had talks on ADAC, and this is a BIM system that the councils around Australia have been using and water authorities. And again, it has its ADAC XML file, so you can pass data around. So everything's well defined with a data transfer format. So it's an open format, then open data, which everyone can then knows how to get data around. So it was fantastic to see how well that's going. Uh, we did a lot of work in drainage, in drainage 1D, that's in the birds of a feather, things like the drainage 4D editor now is a uh, editor rather than using a text editor. A lot of work with drainage 2D about looking at things and seeing the grids of your two flow data so you can see what's going on. Uh, a lot of ways looking at the uh, two flow TGO files in different ways. And depth, velocity, hazards, water levels, all these things you now can use and see in the visualisation. An example example is the uh, dam break one which you've probably seen a few times that that's all now covered quite happily with uh, 12, 11 and 12. There was a new module, dynamic water supply, that came in as the first time, we've, that makes up our three waters, we've got the three of them, and so it allows for hydraulic analysis and water quality behaviour of pressurised pipes and networks. And it can have an extended period simulation, and you can have pipes, junctions, pumps, valves, storage tanks and so on. So that's going to be a new module for everybody, and you're able to see the results graphically as well, just like you can do with your dynamic drainage analysis. So it gives us, a, say, the three waters now. We've got your drainage, 1D and 2D, the sewer, which is the foul water, and the new water supply. And we had an interesting session in the Birds and Feather on uh, what we call the open sewer. We're talking about what people did want now in the sewer side as well to, to push it forward so it matches the, uh, the other ones and sophistication. Point clouds, a lot of interest in point clouds. This is a point cloud of our stand in uh, Fig in New Zealand uh, a few months ago. And the main thing is how to control these point clouds and use them sensibly. And 12 has got a lot of tools there to do so. Lots of new things in plotting for you. Uh, one thing's with PDFs that we showed in you had in version 11, you're able to read in the vectors and text from a PDF, a 2D PDF. And a lot of people didn't realise that, that if they've got a, that's such a PDF file that people can get data out of it. So in 12, you can actually, when you write out the PDF, say, look, I just want to do a raster. Don't produce any text or vectors. So it's just to protect your data. With the plotting with PDFs, we've got a multi-page plot sheet that can uh, plot its pages to one of the PDF, and I'll go about the multi-page plot sheet, mention that shortly, but you also can combine lists of PDFs into one PDF. So if you've got a lot of cross sections, a lot of cross long sections, say if you wish, it'll join them into pages of the one PDF. So any PDF you can merge together. 
So we've added a lot of extra things to a plot uh, PPFs. I get a bit confused there between PDFs and PPFs. So these are the plot parameter files. And things like with cuts. So a lot of them have cuts. You can label X, Y's, X and Y, Y's and X's as before. We also can have the external diameter for the widths and they are in culverts for pipes. We had the internal before, but now the external. And when you actually label these things, you can include the uprates at them, but also stagger them. So they now will stagger, so you can put the thing down in your boxes and it will stagger with them. That's something before you could only put them into position. We've got grids on long sections and drainage long sections and cross section plots. Um, you can label strings and corridors. So if you've got a string in the corridor, you can see it, but now you can label information about it. You can have the changes for long section, you can have the offsets for cross section, heights of the uh, things, the diameters, whether it's round or culverts, coordinates, a whole lot of labels you can put in there, string, model name, string and model attributes, you can put symbols. So you can label them just like you're labeling cuts. Most that same information you can now do more for things in the corridor. With the uh, long sections, you can now actually have a fixed height to your long section, which then will create data breaks, and it does auto data breaks. So you say, look, I want a certain height for my thing to be, and it'll just automatically do the data breaks for you. With the uh, cross sections, where before you could only have um, uprights at the primary points in the strings, you can actually turn those on and off, but you also can define user-defined intervals. So especially for natural cross sections, where you don't want every point where you've done a cut through a tins, you don't want every point labelled, you can now say, look, I want them every five, five metres. And you can have the start and ends of the primary string, start and end of the extension area, and you can put it out into the right and left extension area, which we couldn't do before. So in this case here, we've got our cross section, and uh, we've actually gone and labelled it out into the extension area, left and right of the primary string. So you can see in those areas though, which you couldn't do before, and they're regular here, because obviously there are no points out there anyway, this is where it uses the interval to do it. And so in this case here, same thing, but we've turned them off for actually the, where they are at the string, we're just using intervals. So all these choices are available. With the uh, cross-section points, because points across the cross-sections are, uh, actually have names, we can do what we did with the cuts now, you can stagger them and place them down the bottom. ePlan, ePlan is something that's been in New Zealand for quite a while, uh, for over 10 years, but it's now coming into New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria, and we've had people, companies actually put ePlans in both Queensland and uh, New South Wales, and they're moving towards in Victoria. So we're working with all the groups there. It'll be a slow slog, but bit by bit it's coming, and I think you'll see over the next three or four years, everyone will start using ePlan. So this is where the surveyors are putting in data, instead of putting it on a, a, a drawing, it actually is going uh, through an XML file, so it's all there again, so everyone can mine the data. So again, it's eliminating any sort of plots for that. It'll all be totally through the uh, ePlan XML file. With volumes, we can do tri meshes, we can work out the volumes and areas, and we can also break it up by chain each interval. So if you've got a long, whole lot of long uh, tri meshes making up all the pavement layers and things of a road, you then can get volumes through it just like you would when you used to have cross sections. You can say, hey, you want to break up and, and do it. With chains, lots and lots of extra things in chains. They're probably the thing everyone now is using in 12D model. Uh, so it'll just keep improving it for you, all sorts of things you can do in chains, just to make them more powerful. So as people want things, just let us know, and that's what we add in for the next version. Uh, one thing there I just mentioned, jumped over briefly, you can actually now compile chains. What that means is you can compile them so you can hand them out to other people, and they can't actually modify the chain. So it's very good when you've got standards and you want people to follow them, and you don't want them to go in and fiddle with the chain, you know exactly what they're running. Macro calls, again, heaps of macro calls we've added in. Uh, same as like when we change, as people want more things, we add the macro calls in. Uh, XML reports, in this version, we've tried to add as many XML reports in as we can, wherever possible. So we've tried to add them in the areas that people use most, which is on the volume areas. But the important about where we have put in XML files, you can also have the legacy reports. So I know a lot of you are using those reports for other things. You can always produce those, it's still there, and your um, SLXs and things will not break, your chains won't break. We've set it up so you can have still pick the legacy or you can do it to XML reports. 
So we've got all the end area volume reports that are done, all the uh, section to height, section to section and so on. All the exact volumes between heights, remove calcs, tin to tin, tin to height, there's all XML reports for all of those. Try meshes, the volumes and area and volumes along the string. And actually in the XML, apply many XML, the, it's now a, uh, sorry, if you apply many, apply MTF, got to get used to this new jargon, apply MTF, the report there now can be a legacy one or an XML report. So wherever new reports are always XML, but so we're trying to work through the ones all in the past and bit by bit we'll get through them all. But if there's some in particular, let us know so we can start working on it. There's a lot of new additional additions and things in the MTFs and again, we'll give separate seminars on those over the coming months to show you all the new features in the MTFs and snippets. Tunnels and structures, very important. Before we were able to do tunnels, but you basically defined a profile and you change between profiles, very much like the old apply. In version 12, allowed to do most of it from the MTFs as well and using snippets. So you've got a lot more power now, you can produce tunnels and all sorts of complications in tunnels from your MTF file just like an ordinary road design. So the tunnels are now fitted into our uh, MTF system. So there's all sorts of options in there too to just take here's a tunnel, here's a chain, section through it and produce a profile at what at, at normal to the, uh, to the center line. A lot of work on the lease network lease weight adjustments with scale factors and uh, various point management and, and azimuths for network array. And that leads into the 12D field set out itself where it, uh, it has the least squares in it as well. And just a lot of additional information you can say and show. So we just continually improve those products for you. So uh, certainly get onto your people who are using 12D field set out. Again, we'll have uh, webinars on these once 12D goes out about all the different things that are available. Pickup, pickup is now starting to come into its own. There's a whole lot of hotkey commands and we've got bigger icons there and special icons. And again, a whole lot of things for setting up files and things. And we've sped up the calculation so it's much faster for you to run. With the uh, pickup, so there's a lot of toolbars and things available because on those tablets you just need bigger icons and things to make your sequ sequences much faster. And of course attributes are becoming so important now and pickup is fantastic for picking up attributes. The uh, 12D field tunnel, a lot of work we did this and as you can see with our uh, main talker they were doing tunnels so this is where a lot of this development came from. So a lot of extra work now for tunnels be able to pick them up in all sorts of ways and things like the new uh, Leica scan station MS60 using that to pick up data and we're using those things only as things like the tunnels where you can pick up uh, lots of data and then we can pull data out of it that you want to use. So that's the problem with point clouds and scan data, being able to pull out selectively get what you want rather than billions of points that you don't need. And a new thing for 12D is we now have a new Trimble connection which will allow people to talk up to their Trimble S Series F instruments. Before it was only the SciTech range, now we can do the uh, S Series. We've tested the S6 and the S8 and others to come. We can use either cable, direct Bluetooth or serial radio. And basically you can use any tablet with Windows 7 or above. It's not restricted to just some SciTech tablets. And the full instrument and functionality can be managed from the tablet. So uh, we can do everything we can do in 12D field, we're able to do now with your S series uh, trimbles. And a few other things that uh, we hadn't announced before is that uh, with RoadFlow, uh, there's going to be a version in there for a 30,000 uh, point version of RoadFlow that you'll be able to test out or just come as part of our 12D model base. And uh, said it would be nice if you could check. A lot of people have problems with duplicate names and super alignments in, and MTFs and things. So yes, in 12 there will be a thing to do that. We'll check all that for you and give you a warning. A whole lot of settings on what things you want to warn for. And when you've got your super alignments, you have all these dependencies on other things. What do you do about that? Well, yeah, in version 12 there is a way to tell you, well, yes, this, this super alignment depends on that super alignment or some other string. Again, so you can see in advance and, and follow things if things go wrong. And what about all the relationships and all the dependencies? You can actually even build a graph of it. And it gets complicated very, very quickly, but that's what you need. We have to trace things down to find out what does depend on what when you've got a complicated job. And multi-page plot sheet. This is new. We, in uh, version 11, there was a uh, 
a uh, plot sheet, but this is a new one which allows you to have multi-pages. It also allows you to have cross sections and long sections in it. So you're able to combine them and set them all up. It also has a preview, so you can have a quick draw to have a look at what your plot's going to be like before you plot it as you build it up. Uh, so basically this will allow people to combine things and in this case you can say, look, I want all the pages of this or select the pages to go to the one PDF file. So you don't have to combine them later, you can actually write them straight into pages of the one PDF. But if you have other things, other PDFs you want to combine, you can use our combined PDF option then to put them all together as well as things out of this. So I think you'll all enjoy that one, be able to put together plots and uh, things much more uh, rapidly. And that's all, of course, in 12D Model 12. The Super Inquirer, people have asked for an Inquirer that actually you can configure to what it's going to come up with for different string types, and yes, that will be coming in 12D Model 12. So you can set what you want for a drainage string, it's different to a sewer string, different to a uh, 2D string or a 3D string. And people have been asking a thing called a viewer. 12D View, yes, it is available and will be with 12D Model 12. It will be available free of charge uh, for people who have 12D Model run straight away and others can register to be able to use it. So it will be able to look at all our 12D Model data. So a 12D View, as it's called, will be available with 12. And one thing that we, we showed a little bit, but uh, it will be coming in the lifetime, is if Models and teams could be organised like folders as an explorer. And yes, this will be coming during the lifetime of uh, 12D Model 12. So it just allows you, you get stuck in so many models, you're able to group them together and uh, to handle them so you can add them onto a viewer, things like that, all as one group. What's the release schedule for 12? Well, all the people who were at the conference and were on maintenance now have access to the technical preview versions of 12D Model 12 and this is the final beta stage. So once that's finished, uh, we're trying to get as many people to try it out so, so that all the people at the conference can uh, get, get the technical preview version and the release will be in September. So they'll give us a chance to look at that feedback and so 12D Model 12 C1A will come out in September. So it's not far away, it'll be coming very, very shortly. The conference dinner, uh, everyone enjoys that. Again, uh, we didn't have the 400, we had about 320, I think that's all the room holds, 330 people. It was a tremendous night. Uh, we had an entertainer there. This, this time it was Peter Berner. So a lot of you might have seen him on television. So he was very, very entertaining and kept everybody laughing. And we presented our 12D uh, resellers of the year for 12D Synergy, it was 12D NZ. So they've been doing a fantastic job over there selling uh, 12D Synergy and James Irwin as pictured there has been just runs around flat out around and around New Zealand and for the uh, 12D model itself it was Extra Dimension Solutions, EXDS, that's Tony Ingle, the uh, managing director there and again they're doing a fantastic job selling 12D model uh, in New South Wales, ACT and South Australia. Then we had our Innovation Awards and this is the highlight of the conference and this time I say we had $25,000 worth of prizes rather than just the 15000 and because there's an extra category one, uh, which I uh, did called Banishing the Drafting Demon and uh, the winner of this was Duncan Whiteley from uh, Poolville Cooper and, and uh, Blackley in Newcastle and it was by, it's actually only a student but he has a project on looking at uh, what they're going to do uh, in their office for design and drafting and they're involved in land development and he was looking at the bottlenecks in the processes of drawings when creating from 12D model designs and he looked at the various uh, packages available and looking transferring data from 12D to AutoCAD but they then abandoned it so they concentrated on just using the drafting tools inside 12D model to speed things up as well. He taught himself the 12D model macro language so they could do a lot of macro to assist in the process. So uh, yeah, his project demonstrated the the QA and time saving, the advantages of doing everything inside 12D model and again using your data and mining it rather than have to do it all manually. So that, that was an extra one we did for banishing the drafting demon. For trade sewer and utilities, this was Mal Pika from uh, Engineering Solutions Queensland and Mal created a, a macros actually to do a complex horizontal and vertical design of water mains pressures with joint deflection bends and stack bends. So it was fantastic all our programs will be watching very carefully so uh, what he did to see if we can do the same. 
So he took the tools inside 12D model and wrapped them into the macro and uh, had extensive consultation with the designers and his team to have a, team, a tool that was very uh, easy to use and fits perfectly with what they want. For the survey and construction, it's actually David uh, Greaves from Transport Main Roads in Queensland and Main Roads have developed a set of configuration files, process specific macros and workflows for their own internal use and the consultants who are working for the TMR, and they do this both for surveying and design, so it's fantastic they hand these out. So in this case, uh, David's been working on a lot of them and, uh, and a lot of work too with point clouds and to interface with other uh, software tools. So again, fantastic for what Dave's doing with survey and construction. Uh, with con uh, customization, there's uh, no, uh, not actually Noel there, but uh, there's Noel Brady from Arabs, uh, Arab Cardo, and a, a, in this case, there's a portion of C of the uh, Wagulga Balana Expressway, and they have to uh, implement digital air engineering processes so, so they could provide data to a BIM system for it. So they had to do a lot of work there, getting things in the right form to go out to the BIM system that was looking after all the data. So they developed uh, workflows, design snippets, bespoke macros to do the highway design, including the pavement and the stormwater drainage design as a fully tagged BIM model of the design. So they did a lot of great work there. The design and visualisation was actually uh, Aidan uh, Bickhoff from the Sunshine uh, Coast Council. And Aidan developed a tool to provide smooth data exchange between 12D model and SIDRA, which is used uh, for roundabouts and things. Uh, looking at layouts of the roundabouts or the intersections in 12D model was passed out to SIDRA to do the analysis and things. And then the things that from SIDRA could come back in to uh, update the model inside 12D model. So uh, basically, a, called it the SIDRA to 12D bridge. It basically cut the development time from weeks down to a few hours. So it's great there seeing interaction then with other packages, especially packages. For Synergy, uh, we had David Healy and uh, Philip Stoddard from uh, J. Wyndham uh, Prints, and they've actually uh, pushed the customization of 12D Synergy to uh, basically new levels using uh, P PHP, Java, and CSS they are able to uh, tap into the financial data and present this into the 12D Synergy users in a coherent and useful fashion. Uh, the users are also able to see project milestones and the financial performances on the uh, 12D Synergy dashboard. So it was not just Synergy as delivered, they were able to write a whole lot of things themselves and get them to look at the data. As far as the overall winners, the uh, gold awards, we actually gave out two this time because they were two fantastic projects. and. One company was then for SMEC, so we had Joshua Allison and uh, Michael Mazikis and Avrin uh, Shravatia. I'm not very good with pronunciations, you can see. Um, they actually uh, go from the other side, Joshua's on the right hand side. And uh, they had just had a number of fantastic things that uh, they developed. So it was a combination of entries which all showed innovating thinking and problem solving. And uh, Arvin in Brisbane, he developed a unique way to uh, check point-to-point -point site distances quickly and easily. And uh, it was a developer of the uh, Gateway Upgrade North uh, project and actually can be applicable to all highway projects. So it has a great big long chain, just consider it running and go off and have a cup of tea. Uh, with uh, Joshua Allison and uh, Michael, who are actually from Victoria, from Melbourne, they just brought together a whole lot of tools for designers so they could drainage and sewer design into a central hub. So tools that are available in 12D model, but also extra things and new tabs. They, they just brought the things all together into one place with, along with custom macros and drafting tools. So they've done a lot of things that we'd like to see in 12D itself. So uh, it was a fantastic entry to see. And the other uh, overall winner was actually David Mayers from the uh, Lindley's Boyer joint venture who gave the uh, major talk. And this case was the North Connects project, which was huge, as we saw. It's the deepest tunnel in Australia, has 19 road headers, which is a record for Australia. They're running 24 hours of data. So the amount, the amount of data and everything just meant ordinary traditional data management didn't work. So they've developed the uh, workflows around 12D Synergy uh, for standardising the survey output and uh, providing a route for QA checking of the survey work. And so the surveyors have the most up-to-date data set. So it was a fantastic one. And another, that's why we had the two gold uh, gold awards. So there's our people who are the awards team, or the, the winners. And as I say, it was a fantastic thing. And that was the, 
the highlight of the conference. So as a roundup, what was our conference theme? Mining your data with 12D, did we actually do it? Well, yes, the North Contracts Connects Road Tunnel, mining the data, the ADAC at Bundaberg City Regional, uh, Bundaberg Regional Council, the survey NGOs at Bar and Water, more talks that where they were just using our data again and again, all the talks on BIM by Tony Ingle about again on a number of projects presented where they're just mining the data and using it rather than producing plots and things. The Toowoomba Second Range Crossing, largest road job in Queensland, which has been done in a 12D model for design and Sydney to bring all the data again. Again, using that data again and again. And talks on mapping underground surfaces, they could give you 3D models rather than uh, just drawings. And data management systems at SNEC, uh, relying on all the data and pulling it all together again electronically. ePlan, another one that's, again, basically mining the data rather than just on drawings. And with our 12D attributes and snippets, all the things that come together to uh, just get information out of your data. And fantastic talk by the main roads on their point cloud clash detection, where, again, they're using that with some things inside 12D to look at uh, what trucks and things can go down uh, which roads. And they've got 7,000 kilometres of roads that they're analysing and checking out. So again, you just can't do that any other way except mining that data. So yes, your data is definitely being mined with 12D. So for Al and I, it's been a fantastic 25 years. This was our silver anniversary. Um, and the conference 2016, it was, I think, our best ever. So it was a fantastic conference to go to. And Alan and I and all the 12D staff and resellers just look forward to seeing you at the uh, 12D conference in 2018. Thanks, Lee. You know, I think we'll just take one question today because we're a bit short on time. Um, John from Brisbane would like to know, will videos of the conference talks be online? Uh, thanks, Lisa. Uh, yes, as with the uh, previous conference, the talks, the main talks will be up and put online and we'll be doing that over the uh, coming months. And then a number of the Birds of a Feather talks will actually be done, since they're uh, more specialised things, we'll be doing in this uh, webinar series, going through most of the things as well in the uh, Birds of a Feather sessions. Thank you, Lee. So that's all we've got time for in the live Q&A today. Sorry if you sent through a question we couldn't get to live. We'll get back to you afterwards. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next Industry Solutions webinar will be presented by conference exhibitor Transoft. The topic will be Analyzing Vehicle Swept Path with Auto Turn Online. We'll hold that one on the 23rd of August. We've also got some more great training webinar topics coming up from next week, so see our website for details of all of those. We'll keep updating it with many more topics in coming weeks and also keep you posted through email and social media. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.